This is the Jewish section over here and we're in the this is where all the Muslims are buried. Or we've been. This is Hezekiah's tunnel. It's an underground water system carved out of the rock, three thousand years old. And it brings water to the pool of Saigon, which is where they had their um, water system so that when they got cap they got invaded, they had a safe water system. So there's lots of water. Aunt Sarah's walking through her in her flip-flops and this was hand carved. What happened in the days of Jesus was that, uh, as we had the other day, the temple system was beginning to be corrupt and Jesus was quite critical. And one of the things that they'd done was they'd brought the animals up here, okay? So rather than down below, they were now uh, right in the way of people who had come to worship, people who had come to pray. Uh, and so you see actually, it's not uh, that sort of, uh, that, that they brought it from, from somewhere here down in here, but it's from somewhere further away up into the actual temple courts, okay? Um, as well, these stones that you see, these massive stones, they all, how much do they weigh, I mean? Each two, two nearly tons. two tons. A number of tons. Yes. Each. Especially the ones on the corner, which you can see it's a whole one. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, as well, that, that's good. A good point. These stones, you see, they have kind of a frame around them. That means they're Herodian. We'll see some more Herodian stuff. Herod the Great built a lot of things, uh, and you can tell when it's Herodian because it's got this kind of frame around uh, the stones. Look at this one, for instance. It's absolutely massive. It's quite ambitious. Now, I wanted to say about these stones. I want one of you to quote to uh, Amit, what does Jesus say when he looks? He sits on the, on the uh, Mount of Olives with his disciples. They say, look, like, Lord, uh, these great buildings, all these great massive stones. What does Jesus say? Can, so, can anyone quote? Not one of these stones will be left unturned. Exactly. None of these stones will left will be left on uh, on another. Now, in the seventh century, uh, Muslims are coming. Very early Muslims. Uh, the Umayyad uh, house. They arrive here, and they decide that this would be a perfect place to build their shrine. So the first sanctuary that they built is the Dome of the Rock. That's the Golden Dome that you cannot miss while traveling into Jerusalem. And some 50 years later, they add to it also a mosque. A mosque which is very similar to the basilica that was standing above before, but now instead of being no, uh, west and east, it was north and south. And you can see the, the southern end of that basilica, this is the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Uh, a bit after this was built, uh, sorry, a bit before this was built, a new a um, story was relating Jerusalem to Islam. I don't want to get into it right now, but the Al-Aqsa Mosque is something that appears in the Quran as part of the uh, miraculous night journey of Muhammad, the prophet of Islam. And at the end of the journey, he arrives to the Al-Aqsa Mosque, to the extreme mosque, the mosque at the end of the world, maybe. And when this heritage, the Umayyad, the Umayyad they came here, They've decided that this is the place of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. It's related to many things, uh, some politics, some uh, even uh, 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 money uh, things, and for the Umayyad not have to have any access to Mecca and Medina. So they wanted to take pilgrims to come into Jerusalem as well. And this is how Jerusalem became to be the third important place for Islam and making the Al-Aqsa Mosque the third in importance 
to Islam, although not all Muslims are following that um, tradition. Just going for a walk today, on a day off. Not without car today, so we're just walking around. And, uh, yeah, it's a nice day, really hot again. Gonna meet up with the girls later. We're gonna go and pray for some more people. But just to manage to chill out and just walk around. It's pretty good. We just found this random garden. It's like uh, there's like a nunnery, but where people stay, tourists stay, and uh, this huge garden. It's quite amazing. Unfortunately, we can't go over to Palestine because none of us have brought our passports. We were going to go and see the place where Lazarus was, Lazarus was raised from the dead. It's very near the Palestine Wall. We can't go over there. The whole, the whole place is just amazing. Whenever you go up high anyway, you just feel the awe of the view. We're just in the queue for the Temple Mount. We're about to go in. We've got up about quarter to seven today to get here to just to avoid the queues. <laughs> the wall, just looking up where we were the first day. I just went and prayed next to the wall and uh, I just prayed that all these Jews had come to find, come to know Jesus Christ. You know, it's a very religious, Jerusalem is a very religious place. There's all sorts of different religions. I guess it's sort of like a bit sad when you see so many people that are just kind of trapped in, you know, the, the wrong thinking. Like they don't really know the truth of Jesus Christ. But you know, it is what it is and it's still fascinating to come and see it.